Well, welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us tonight. My friend Faye Burton asked for a pasta recipe. So I'm going to make pasta tonight. And I'll show you two methods. One for flat sheets for lasagna and one for the extruder, my KitchenAid extruder. I'll make some rigatoni. Here's the recipe. Pause and write it down and hey, if you stick around till the end, I'll have a bonus sauce recipe for you. Now pasta is really not hard, but it's very, very messy. I have three cups of all-purpose flour with a teaspoonful of salt sifted in. And I'm going to pour in four beaten eggs. And you know, I'm using a KitchenAid, but you can use any mixer. And you can use any pasta roller. Um, I don't know of any other way to do the extruder though. This is an ounce of water and you can use up to two ounces just based on the humidity and the flour that you have. Uh, I'm going to put in about a teaspoonful of olive oil. This is not the KitchenAid recipe by the way. I really don't like the KitchenAid recipe. It's too stiff and this is pretty stiff. So uh, we're going to just start mixing it and you know I said it was messy let me slow it down a little bit I really need one of those bowl guards and you're gonna mix this for just 30 seconds it won't take any more than that and I'll take the opportunity to wipe up a little of the flour and we just want it to all come together and that's about enough we'll finish this up with the dough hook. Let me just kind of show you the texture here. And I probably should have put the other ounce of uh, water in, but this will be okay. It's easier to work with more water, but then you have to work more flour in while you're kneading it. So it's six of one, half a dozen of another. So let me wipe up a little bit and let's turn on the dough hook. And we're going to let this run for about two minutes and it'll pull it all together and we'll have a nice ball of dough and this should be pretty elastic and it's it's actually pretty stiff we're going to knead it I've got it here on this floured board and you knead it by pulling it and rolling it and you want to do this for about three minutes um, I told someone today I think my hands are getting too old for this but uh, you don't want to work a lot of flour into it if it's this stiff. Uh, you, you just want to get it to this nice leathery almost texture. And when I get it worked for about three minutes, I'm going to put it in a bowl, a floured bowl, and I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap. Then I'm just going to let it sit for 20 minutes, uh, cover it up, and make sure you cover it well and seal it with plastic wrap or it'll form a crust. So we'll be back in 20 minutes. This is my KitchenAid pasta roller and uh, you don't have to use this. You can use any kind of pasta roller. Roller. You can even use one where you turn the little crank by hand. We're gonna flour it uh, and, and you know, just a little note, you never wash this thing. You set it aside and let it dry and then clean it with a brush. Then I seal mine up in a plastic bag. So we're going to spread this dough out just a little bit. I'm going to make it into kind of a square, which works best for me. You can cut it like a pie if you want to, but uh, I like to cut it in strips. And I'm going to cut this into four strips, which would give me eight large lasagna sheets. So you just, just try to cut them as even as you can. Now, now I don't use a cutter. I don't have a cutter. I use an extruder when I do something other than lasagna sheets. So um, I'm only going to make half of this dough into lasagna sheets, but I'll show you how I do that. And I'm going to dry the lasagna for later. I'll hang it and dry it overnight, and I'll show you how to cook fresh pasta toward the end. Now this little wheel on the end sets the um, width, how far apart the rollers are, and we're going to start on one, and we'll go up to five. Uh, for the lasagna sheets and you just let it feed through 
I'm not pulling on this at all. I let it feed through naturally. I'm just catching it. And then fold it, and this is on one, and run it through again. Now we're gonna run it through each uh, level at least twice. I'm gonna run this one just an extra one since we folded it. And our goal is to get it about four inches wide. So let's turn it up to two. I know there are some pasta rollers that will do it wider. This one only goes about four inches. So just run it through at its own pace. And by the way, I have the KitchenAid set on two. You can do it a little bit faster if you want to, but you know, I, I really am no, in no hurry and I can't catch it if it goes faster. I'll flour it as I go. I'm on three now. I'm gonna run it through again. And you know, it's wider on one end than the other. I'll show you how to fix that uh, in a minute. Because at any time, if this tears or breaks, or if you wanna reshape it, you can just fold it and run it through a few times and get it into the shape you want. You see this is really pretty sturdy. It's very elastic and very strong and I know the dough looked really really thick and stiff when I started and you don't have to make it that thick and stiff but if you get it too loose uh, it'd be easier to knead but it, it won't stick together the same way. Now as I said I don't have a cutter uh, just you want to measure your lasagna pan and you want to cut this sheet to the length of your lasagna pan and for most pans you'll go two across. If you want to cut it into smaller noodles you can but none of the cutters I've ever seen actually cut lasagna like you buy in a box they cut sheets but you can cut this any size you want however you want to work with it uh, and you can either cook it fresh or dry it now, I'm gonna dry this and I actually don't have a pasta rack I don't make pasta that often so I just use some plastic hangers you can put a dish towel on the back of a chair you can put it anywhere and uh, just just hang it up now I have people ask questions about is it okay to leave it out to dry because it's made with eggs there's not enough moisture in this pasta for salmonella to develop so you want to wash your hands while you're working with the eggs but once it's dry it's perfectly safe so I'm gonna do one more we'll turn it down or I'll show you a little bit of one more because I want to show you how to kind of reshape it if it's not going the way you want it to so here we go. Run it through, fold it, run it through again. And you can see this is getting much wider on one end than it is the other. So to fix that, just lay it down, fold it over. Now that thickness is going to make it spread out more on the narrow end when you run it through again. And you'll want to run it through a couple of times to let that spread out. So that's really all there is to it. You want to run it through twice, at least twice, on each setting, one through five. Uh, and then you'll have your lasagna sheets. As I said, for a pan of lasagna, you're probably going to want eight of these. Cut them to fit your pan. I'm going to let these dry overnight. Uh, and then I'll tell you how to cook them when I'm cooking the rigatoni. Let's move to the rigatoni. So this is the KitchenAid Pasta Extruder. Uh, you don't have to have one of these. You can buy another little attachment that looks like the roller that's a cutter, and you can run the finished sheets through it and cut linguine and cut spaghetti. 
I wanted to make macaroni and rigatoni and angel hair and that sort of thing. So I got this extruder. And it has, I think, eight, yeah, eight different heads to make different shapes of pasta. And this is another attachment where you don't wash um, the mechanism. You can wash the little external things, the attachments, but the mechanism, you let it dry and you brush it, brush it and it comes with a tool. I then seal it up in a plastic bag. So I've chosen the rigatoni. You just screw that on and this attaches to your KitchenAid just like any other attachment. I have to say, you know, this extruder is one reason I wanted a KitchenAid. Uh, I bought this one used. I think it's on its last leg, but it's still working. So we're all hooked up here. I've got it on speed two. You could do four if you wanted to. And just take little pieces and drop them down in there and then press them in. Don't press it too hard. And it's going to take a little while for it to actually feed uh, down to the mold. I guess you call that a mold, the little attachment. So put it in little chunks at a time, about an inch square, and press each one down a little bit. And just keep doing this until you see it start coming out of the bottom. There it is. So when it starts feeding out the bottom, and I waited a little bit too long, you're gonna cut it off with this handy dandy little cutter here. Uh, and kinda eyeball it to try to get them all about the same size. And once they start coming, they come out pretty quickly. I like to keep it on speed too because you have to cut and feed at the same time. You really don't want a gap in there. And But you can see I'm getting a nice little rigatoni. And I just need to make sure I pull the little bit of dough that sticks to that cutter. I'm catching them here. This is a cookie sheet with uh, wax paper with a little flour on it. Some people, by the way, use a little cornmeal instead of flour but because they don't want the flour to stick to it, but I just use flour. And you just continue on with the process until all your dough is gone. Let me get it at just a little bit better angle for you so you can see the process a little better. And really, there's nothing here to do except just kind of keep an eye on the size and continue to feed kind of evenly. So we're getting right to the end here. It starts coming out pretty slowly. And then I'll show you what we got. So this is our finished product. I'm going to separate them out. I have plenty of flour here, but that's okay. That won't hurt a thing. Now this is a half a recipe. I did half in a lasagna sheet and half in rigatoni. It makes a little over a pound uh, of either one. So the whole recipe would be enough for uh, a macaroni and cheese casserole. Or if I'd done it all in lasagna sheets, it would be enough for one lasagna casserole. It'd be about what you'd buy in a pound box, but it's so much better. We're going to let this dry about 15 minutes before we cook it, and then I'll show you how we do that. This is a four quart pot. I would use a bigger pot if I were cooking the whole recipe. Six quarts usually. You want plenty of water. You want it at a rolling boil. Fresh rigatoni cooks for about three minutes. Now if we were cooking the lasagna sheets fresh, you would cook them for only one minute at a rolling boil and then you would take them out and rinse them in cold water. And I know I never tell you to rinse pasta in cold water or to rinse it at all. But with the lasagna sheets, you need to. And here's the bonus sauce. I'm melting half stick of butter in my cast iron skillet. That's a healthy pinch of basil. While my water's coming to a boil, I'm just gonna let this melt on a low heat. And I'm gonna add about a half teaspoonful of minced garlic. I don't want this to brown. I'm just gonna turn the heat down really, really low and let it sit here while my pasta cooks. Oops, almost forgot. I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of red pepper flakes and I'll check it for salt right before I serve it. Okay, water's boiling. I'm gonna quickly drop this in. I'm shaking a little of the flour off as I go. 
this being fresh is only going to cook about three minutes if I had let it dry I would cook it five to six minutes you're going to take a piece out after about two and a half minutes and check it for al dente and yes you know if you've been striving to cook uh, pasta al dente and you've been using boxed pasta you actually never get it quite al dente but with fresh pasta you can and I can't tell you exactly how long because it depends on how long it dried before you got it in the pot but about three minutes so it's been three minutes I've checked it it's al dente I'm gonna put it over here in this sizzly butter and don't worry about draining it for this recipe too much because the pasta water is part of it but you can drain it in a colander if you're going to use it for something else so when we get it all in I'm going to add one little scoop this is about two ounces of the pasta water and that will help thicken it just a little bit enough to stay on the rigatoni you know it's got nice ridges so it'll hold the sauce going to stir that around a bit just to get it covered I'm going to let it simmer oh not more than a minute or so I don't want to cook the pasta too much and I've grated up about an ounce of Parmigiano Reggiano I'm going to put most of it here on the pasta some I'll save uh, to put on after it's done taste it if you need salt now's the time I'm just gonna stir it around and distribute the cheese then I'm gonna turn the heat off and let it sit here long enough just to cool a little bit and let the sauce thicken just a tad then I'll plate it up and I'll show you what we got and here we have it now you know I don't actually eat a lot of pasta but I'm gonna eat this and Fresh pasta is so much better than boxed pasta. I, I don't know how to tell you. It's like a different thing altogether. Um, the sauce stays on this very nicely. You can use this for this pasta for any recipe you want to. And with the extruder now, you can make spaghetti. You can make two different sizes of macaroni. You can make rotini. Um, I'm, I'm glad I bought it, even though I don't use it very often. And for lasagna sheets and fettuccine and linguine and spaghetti you're just fine with the uh, roller and cutter and you know a manual machine to do that is not very expensive and if your family eats a lot of pasta it's really worth the time because oh my this is just so wonderful thank you for joining us on debbie's back porch hope to see you again tomorrow